Hello, I am your host, Kathy Chester, and welcome to the Move It or Lose It podcast, a podcast about all things that move the mind, body, and soul. The Move It or Lose It podcast is for information, awareness, and inspirational purposes only. I am not a doctor, and I don't even play one on TV. So please consult your doctor before making any medical decisions. The views expressed by advertisers, guests, or contributors are their opinions and not necessarily the views of the Move It or Lose It podcast. Hello, welcome to another edition of Move It or Lose It. So today I have one of my very close friends that I've been close to for a very long time. Jamie, your last name's not on there. You know I'm so bad with last names. All right, Jamie, you and I have known each other from Instagram. I don't even want to age ourselves. It's been some years. Yeah. Some years. A while. So A while. (laughs) It's been a bit. So I love you so much. So your Instagram handle was one of my favorite. Not that I ever get it right. It's like hugs, loves, but tell, say your Instagram handle. Okay. I am love warrior hugs. Um, my, yes. my real name is Jamie Stewart, but I came up with Love Warrior Hugs because I love to hug. I really do. Yeah. And when you are hugging a warrior, I don't know, I just feel like I want to exude the extra vibe, the extra energy. So I've just yeah. kept it. Yeah, I and, love it. I love it. And your energy is so contagious. You have such <laughs> an energy of hugs and loves, and that's just who <laughs> you are. And it just comes out immediately. So I love that about you. And I wore my um, MS shirt with the butterfly. So Mm -hmm. I know you love the butterfly. And so much stuff that we have in common, not to mention two diseases that we share together. But I'm interviewing you today. So I Mm -hmm. want to know about, Jamie, we've known each other a long time, but for people who don't know you, tell us about life before diagnosis. What were your dreams, hopes, Things that you kind of, all the things that you thought life was going to be before diagnosis. Um, well, being a little bit more mature, I was diagnosed when I was 18, but that was in 1994, um, before Google, all that stuff. So I didn't know. And at the time I also didn't know this is epilepsy. I'm sorry. This was the first beast. And when epilepsy showed up to town, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anybody. I just knew that I had had one bad seizure. It sucked and I didn't want to do it again. That was all. So I thought that the world was still, you know, my everything it could be. I did not think that there would be any difference. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward to when I was 24, 25 was when I was diagnosed with MS. Now, I did know some people with MS and they were much older. And so they were in a wheelchair, perhaps in a assisted facility. And, you know, that like, oh, I was so nervous. My mom said, should I buy you a chair now? And I'm like, whoa, back the truck up there. (laughs) Um, Yes. So those were- Some people say the funniest things. No, when you're diagnosed. No. Well, especially from my mother. Come on. Yeah. Like really? Um, so yeah, that's where I was really concerned. And yeah. um it hasn't been as mean to me as the epilepsy. Interesting. Very interesting. How they like tag for who's gonna be first. I don't know. You know, um recently I forget which I think it was Dr. Shaw. She's been on, okay. I don't know if she's been on with you or not. Um, she talked about I'm trying to remember, that, so don't do that to me. I'm like, okay, wait, maybe I don't know. Uh, but she recently talked about um, like basically two spectrums of MS, uh-huh. and one spectrum that she said isn't talked about enough is like it's called benign. Yeah, absolutely. Where, yeah, and I would be considered benign. I so, know more people today then I, I didn't know that that even existed 15 years ago. And I would say I've met more people. It, well, it did, but no one ever talked about it. I mean, one well, of my parents' best friends had it. She's had it, well, she's in her 70s now, and she's always had it. She, was, she got a big flare in the beginning, 
And, you know, a couple things are here and there that are annoying, but nothing big. And so it's never been something that has taken over or has been a big issue in her life. And so, you know, that got me realizing that there, if there's one, there's a lot more of those out there. So it really got me researching, you know, what is benign MS and why is it not talked about? And it's not listed until recently. And so it is so interesting that that's, that was something that wasn't really talked about. And I, I truly believe that I am in that position, number one, because mm -hmm. I found a really, really good doctor. And he had the ability to have me on some DMTs, like right when they came on. I was one of the first people on Ocrevus for uh -huh. there. Um, I've had the relapses that I've had were all pre um, either Tysabri or Ocrevus. Okay. And they told me, they're like, they're working for you. So keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel pretty good on that end. Yes, definitely. Good. And I'm also, um, my doctor that I see now, uh, has all of his patients in physical therapy, if insurance will okay. cover it. So good. I'm doing good. that. Now. Very good. Yeah. That's, that's our big battle that we're working on. So, so right. far, a couple of people have been approved because as you know, it's that physical therapy portion. And then now that the MS society has said since two, 2020 exercise is a must now it's like now we're battling that like this has to be covered if we're you know right. getting this much <laughs> in you've got you can't say no to this because then right. they're done with physical therapy they're like help now what now i need to do yes. more so well and, but that's and for it. me it's falls i still have had some issues with falls mm -hmm. but that that's balance and they he doesn't necessarily think it's related to my MS. He said it just could be an overall thing. So, yeah. you know, that's something like balance and strength mm -hmm. and that, um, that I, I don't have those types of things at home to, right. to work on. Yeah. So, that's but, one of the things I do a lot with the clients is a lot of balance issues, a lot of mm -hmm. things like that, you know, because we've got to figure that out in our, in our daily walk, in our, going to reach for something or moving on the side, assuming that all ground is going to be equal. You know, yeah. what do we do? We've got to make that step over. And so a lot of, a lot of that is, is about a lot of balance, a lot of balance work. So it is interesting, the things that we do that is much different than what we did in the gym in our young years. So, well, and I will say, and I'm curious about you stairs. Yeah. Stair because they can be different sizes if you can't get your foot on. I mean, yes. I have an absolutely new appreciation for stairs. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It is um, one of my my things that I, I take the most joy from is when my MS, paid, well, and, and a lot of them, different, different autoimmune, but when they're able to conquer stairs and feel confident and know mm -hmm. that they can is, is a huge, huge thing. So that's always... Always, I get, gosh, I don't think there's much more exciting than for me than that or able to have the freedom to be in the shower standing for the first time. Oh, yes. That's yeah. exciting. Shower is a good thing, but like, I know how many stairs I have and, you know, I have fallen down them before, not necessarily, yes. probably epilepsy more, but yeah. I'm like very conscious of it. Yes. Yes. So one of the things I thought was so neat about you is talk to us about when did you start to advocate when you were diagnosed? Um, well, my doctor that I have right now told me that he thought my epilepsy life would be better if I could afford to stay at home. Now, at that point, I'm a kind of a type A person. I like to be busy all the time. I was able to connect with the different societies. Um, first was MS Society and mm -hmm. I did walks. Um, my first MS walk, I was pregnant with my daughter, like I'm going to say seven months pregnant. And then they were eight miles. And I'm like, what are you <laughs> doing? What are you doing to these MS people? <laughs> A mile. I remember those. <laughs> yeah. So it was eight miles, but, um, gradually they, they became less and less. And right. one of them we did in snow. Um, yeah. so that, <laughs> That was where, you know, the first level of advocacy came to play. And then sure. I got connected through my doctor with uh -huh. the Epilepsy Foundation. 
And okay. I did a lot more with them. Um, just from articles to presentations. I did a podcast with them. Um, I did a lot of work for um, some of the walks, uh, raised a lot of money for them. Um, and I haven't done as much since COVID because they haven't okay. done as much either. Sure. So, but yes, I, as far as I'm concerned, all the time I'm trying to advocate for everybody. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's not just one or the other. Yeah, you do a very good job of that. You do a lot of advocacy through your page where mm -hmm. you bring a lot of things together. You do, you're very creative in your, in your advocacy. I noticed that right away. I always thought that was really cool that you did that. Yeah. Thank so you. What would, I love, what would you say about like, so you have how many kids, Jamie? I have two. One is my miracle baby. And then my other one is my wish come true. So my um, daughter that is in Nebraska, she will graduate in May with her education degree and already has a job and she's living in Nebraska. So must be good there. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. Uh, must and then be. I have I'm, my um, daughter that is adopted. She is currently a junior in high school. Okay. So, yeah. Very nice. And you're in Chicago. I'm in a suburb of Chicago. I have lived yeah. in the city proper, but not uh -huh. for a long time. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I need to get back to Chicago, not just to see you, but I haven't been there in a bit. So I'd love to be there. Oh, there's um, so much stuff to do. There is so much. I didn't want to come in the winter, but we didn't really have a big winter. So yeah, we did it today. Cause no. it's kind of not good, but it's freezing today. I'm like, what is going on? It's so cold today, but, um, um I was going to say one, one thing that I'm not sure that you had asked me about before, but where my MS is kind of still active is it gave, uh -huh. gave me trigeminal neuralgia. So That's right. there's, there's seven kinds and mine is MS related. So okay. that guy brings me pain like no other. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So that, That's very painful. Yes, and so, so with the epilepsy, so you've had the epilepsy, your struggle with that, mm -hmm. where is it the, that gives you the most trouble in your daily life? Um, For those of people who don't know that much about epilepsy. So I have what's called um, or refractory epilepsy. So that means that it's not medication controlled. And for them to determine that, you have to try at least two medications that don't work. I've tried 19. Wow. I'm, I'm currently on five. Um, wow. I'm not eligible for surgery. Um, and also, I mean, at least at this time, I am very hopeful there'll be better treatments. Yeah. And I continuously try new medicine and stuff and keep up with that. Um, but because of the all of the medicines, I would say mm -hmm. that they make me extra fatigued. You know, yeah. to the point even where I feel dull. That's the way I explain yeah. it to people. A little bit dull. Mm -hmm. Like I would have more energy to do things if I didn't have five of them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So they, right now you're, you're on medications for it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And supplements as a result because they diminish your protein and your folate and all these other things. Right. So yeah. So lots Yikes. of things. Yes. So all the supplements and then the medication for your MS, you're on Ocrevus right now. Right. Mm -hmm. On Ocrevus. And I've been on it since it's been around. Okay. It was approved in like a February and I started it in March. Okay. Wow. So it's a lot. You're on a lot. Yes. But you're still, you're still going and going and going. So I love that. You never stop. Um, I so what, you, yeah, you, you are just the energizer bunny. So what I want to know is when you're battling, as we both know, mine is the <laughs> epilepsy, the rheumatoid and the MS, when you're battling multiple diseases and you're bad, what is it as far as energy that you feel the most zapped? Like the days that you feel, and I, and I know this having it, the days that you feel like you got all this to accomplish, you want to get these things done. And it's just, it all like, brrr, tumbles and your energy is gone. Tell me about those days and those listening okay, well, that have those days. 
if I have a big seizure and hurt myself, I'm definitely done that day. However, I would say more frequently is the pain that I feel from the trigeminal. Um, like days like today, if I go outside, mm-hmm. even eating, talking too much, things to that effect can yeah. make the day where it's it's bad every day, yeah. but not to the point where I can't do anything. Yesterday, right. it was bad that I didn't get out of bed. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, they call it the suicide disease because yeah. the pain can get yeah. that high. So, yeah, I guess they split evenly. Um, yeah. Or, or that. Yeah, I um, absolutely. Because uh, you know the issues I've been dealing with my mouth, and it yeah. I feel like it it hurts so much every single day, and it's you know a scale between one and ten, and it can get me in such a mood that I I'm not in an angry I'm not an angry person in general, so mm-hmm. it can get me so sad that I'm like I I just don't want to go anywhere because it just hurts so much. I just want to stay in a quiet place. And so those times like that, I think it's so important. I did a podcast a few weeks ago where we were just very raw and honest about it, that, you know, there's days where I can get it together and I can do some, you know, fun posts and stuff. And there's days where I'm like, I just can't, I can't do it today because I need to take some time for myself and I need to get my whole body simmered down because it's up here. And so I'm sure you have days like that too, Jamie, but you just like yesterday where you just have to take it down because it's just over. And I think uh, I'll call this the maturity of having illnesses for a while is you need to be able to realize that that day is there and cancel. Like I was supposed to go to physical therapy yesterday, but I right away said, this is not an option and maybe not tomorrow. Like in my head, knowing um, yes. but because I rested and I think I just, you know, I just was, I believe that that helped my health for today and how I feel yeah. today. Yeah. Yesterday. And I love that Jamie. It's, it's really good because, you know, I have clients that know their body really well and they'll let me, they'll message me and say, I need to do an easy one. And they know that because I'm on my own, it could be, we're just breathing and stretching. And mm-hmm. I love when they know their bodies enough to say that. And even though it's hard and they want to, they want to do the regular workout that we're going to do. But I always say knowing your body is so empowering. That's mm-hmm. not something that is, that is wrong or something to be embarrassed about. To have these diseases and to know when it's time to settle is so empowering. And it's going to help you so much as we grow in this because we want to be the best that we can be and show up for the things that we that matter the most. And mm-hmm. so we've got, I always say, have a list of your values, you know, the things that mean the most. And if you want to show up to those and we want to be present, if we give all of our energy to things that are not in the values, then we can't be there for the things that mean the most. So I think that that's great, Jamie. I think you, you make good choices. Well, And another example that I think is important, maybe can relate to the audience is um, I am taking physical therapy to help with my multiple sclerosis. And, you know, I've come in before and my back just is just hurting and they won't let me do the exercises. So instead they do the hands-on and then like the e-stim and other things. And it makes such a difference. Whereas if I had rode the bike and lifted weights and stuff, it would have become worse. Right. So, right. you know, if, if you have good providers and things like that, or you, you yourself, yeah. um, you also can contribute to the, right. you know, what goes on. Yeah. I always say you don't know till you have it. You got to have it. Then, you know, <laughs> then you see in the eyes, it's like, no, we're not doing that. We're just going to calm. We're going to calm. So I really do. Yeah, not the day. So um, I love that you have obviously a good team because that's so incredibly important, right? We've got to have that team. Um, One of the, I put down some of the biggest struggles and how you turn into positives. So when you're going through some of the biggest struggles you go through, tell me how you reframe because that's a big thing for me is I always want to show even my kids. But when I, especially when I do, when I work, have the support group, is the newly diagnosed patients, how how do you reframe 
a really bad day physically into, okay, I may not have been able to do this, this, and this, but I'm going to reframe this. So this day isn't the worst day of my life. I say two things. One is always have a celebration, even if it's just getting out of bed. And if you can share that with someone. Yeah. And secondly, do never compare. Do not say like, we're talking about this now to give an example, but right. don't compare my physical therapy today to yesterday because right. there are different circumstances. The weather was different. I slept more. Right. There's a lot of different things. And the final thing, well, this is more than two, but if you're newly diagnosed, I want people to um, think positive and think ahead. Yes. Because there are so many things in the future and we do not get a book that's like, welcome to MS land. <laughs> welcome to epilepsy land. This is what you need to know. Right. right. Most, of, most of the time it happens, like something happens or like my trigeminal. They're like, oh, that's really right. MS. Didn't yeah, know. exactly. Right. Something I did not know, a new thing. Yes, yes. for sure. And, and no, too, I think of all the groups, we have such a supportive group more than ever. And I, I think it honestly through COVID and all of that, I think it brought so many of us together, such a beautiful supportive group that mm -hmm. we can go to each other and say, help, I need help. And I think that I, I have found with our newly diagnosed, um, they're able to get into some groups and know immediately, this is not a healthy group. I think we talked about this before. My first, my first support group was in a scooter shop, literally a wheelchair store. And I was like, what on earth? This is terrifying. Who would want to be in here? And probably the, I can still take away a blessing in that was there was a young, a young person like myself. And he actually introduced me to my favorite neurologist I ever had. So had I, had I, you know, just ran out as fast as I really wanted to, um, I would not have met him and I would not have met my doctor. So hopefully no one is going to scooter shops anymore for, um, yeah. for their support groups. But, um, you know, I think you just learn to keep trying. And I, I think our newly diagnosed patients now with so much available realized like immediately, like, this is not what I want. I don't want this negative in my life. So they're able to jump into something where they feel like, okay, this is supporting me and it, and it feels good. And I really like that, that there are so many, I mean, I love to see the women come into our group and I love the support. And I always think, man, I wish this was available when, you know, when it, we were younger and it was, and it wasn't snail mail when we got to like have something. So I love that that's available. Um, and I love that answer that you gave. Um, talk to me about your relationship with your spouse and how has that been for you and as far as like having a support system? Well, first of all, he's amazing. He's not listening, but he is. Um, so I knew him with my epilepsy because I met him in college. Okay. So okay. we didn't get married until after, but he was there with me when I got my MS diagnosis. Wow. Okay. My epilepsy at the time was nice and happy and blown me kisses, but the MS when it came on wasn't. And I believe that it is, even though they told me you have MS to have that like validated and somebody say yes, and this is the right thing. So, I mean, I went to five doctors before I found one and I got my referral from my podiatrist. Really <laughs> interesting. So, yeah, you never know who's going to have something. Wow. You really don't. No. And especially like this was, you know, 2001 when I right. got, was diagnosed. That's a long time ago. Yeah. And so some, sometimes the newbies, I'll call them for whatever diagnosis, it right. says in my profile how long I've had diseases. And all they can think is, oh my goodness, <laughs> how, yeah. how did you do that for this long? Right. And it's, it's with my husband because yeah. he understands, um, he does my medicine. He's an accountant by trade. So, you know, he wants to make sure all those things are right. Sure. And 
you know, so, and I still double check every day when I take yeah. them. I know which ones are going to be in there, but he helps me with that. Um, just before this, he helped carry some things upstairs. So there's not, and we, when you have a good relationship, it's easy, it becomes easier to say, don't take laundry up and down. That's something <laughs> if you want to fold or wash, but don't do that. Right. You're more yeah. likely to fall and yeah. have something happen. Uh, For and sure. so coming, yeah. And so coming up with these, you know, um, different things, like he made my lunch today because he knew I didn't have a lot of time. Um, yeah. And I might do that for him another time. Right. Right. Um, it it so. is huge. And I think, and I love to be able to do more for our caregivers because they don't get a lot. You know, they, I'm constantly like, go golfing, go do something. You need, you deserve some things because, mm -hmm. you know, Lance does a lot of AV. That's his business. So that's so comparable for me to be able to do my stuff. So whenever I'm stuck with any technical stuff, I'm like, where are you? Help, help. <laughs> so it is a big thing. So that is huge. And and they do have a sense of, you know, um, my eye can look tired. And he's like, why don't you take a rest? Or the stairs up and down, up and down. He's like, there's no reason. Just right. do let's do something else and I'll go up and down the stairs. And right. so, you know, I'm hard headed. So it takes me a little bit. And then I'm like, okay, I'm done. I won't go up and down the stairs anymore. So, um, but I do love that you've got that, that you have that relationship. And one of the things I always tell a lot of um, newly diagnosed or even people that have been diagnosed for a while that really want to be with someone that aren't is don't give up on that. I was divorced and I really felt like that that would be forever. And I, I just didn't feel like, you know, I, I guess what I would say is I felt like I'm trying to fix my shirt um, <laughs> is that you know, who would want to marry this lady with MS, rheumatoid, and three kids? That's a package, yeah. right? Woo! Yeah. So, but you know, I believe that if that's in your heart, that probably there's someone there for you that mm -hmm. that is made for you. And, you know, I am happily married with a man that adores my kids and I adore, I adore his. And so we have five children together, all adult kids. And so I think that, you know, there's hope and don't, don't feel as if you've got these diseases and then you're, you're just something that's tossed aside. This is your life. And there's just as much you have to offer as anyone else. And I always feel so sad when someone feels that they're less than because of these diseases. Well, and that's really important um, because you, what, who you are is what you exude, right? If you yes. instantly are sad, then they're, they don't want that energy. You have to bring about the energy that you want back. Absolutely. And, right. And so like with my husband, um, he knows that I get embarrassed sometimes. Like if, if I should have a seizure in front of somebody sure, or, or if they should ask, um, maybe an uncomfortable question. Yes. Um, and so he is very good about, hey, come here. <laughs> and just interjecting because he knows otherwise, then I'm going to go down. Not like right. fall down, but you know what I mean? Right. My, yeah. my happy joy, joy is going to be like, not so much. <laughs> right. If we're together, we'll do a good job of tag teaming. If I'm asked a question, mm -hmm. I'll say, hey, I want to ask you something about this. So can you come over here? So we'll do a good job of tag teaming. So I'm sure you guys have that down as well. Yes. So I love that because it, it is such a tricky, um, you know, it's tricky, but it's something that I think when you've been married or when you've been with whoever that character, I even do that with my best friend and she'll see some things and look at me like I'm getting you out of here. So I really always appreciate that. Um, a couple of the other things I want to get to before I, before you leave me, I want to get you this. Um, so one of the things I love about you, and I know you'll have a great answer for this, um, what is something that you're really looking forward to do, to do like in the next year, what do you have up your sleeve that you really are looking forward to do as far as advocating or something you've got going? Well, I have met one of my best friends and she is in Canada. And okay. so we talk every day and we try to meet once a year. So last year we met in 
Niagara Falls, which was amazing. I'd never been there before. Oh, so I went there one time, long time ago. Yeah. So this year, um, my daughter goes with me. Why she wants to hang out with a bunch of 40 year olds, I don't know, but she enjoys it. So we're going to take a train ride up to Canada. I love so, it. Yeah. Well, so girlfriend, I may have to join to you. Yeah. I'm not that far. No, that's, oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful, Jamie. That's yeah. wonderful. So the, as far as advocating, I I'm always advocating like all the time. I yes, don't you are. Feel, I don't know that. See, if I'm going to do the MS walk or the epilepsy walk, um, and and they always want you to raise money, right? And yes. I don't feel like most people, and even me, are in a position to donate much money. And right. I I feel sad asking them because yeah. knowing that some people feel guilty like well Jamie's my good friend I better do that and so yeah. until I feel like as a whole we are in a better position to do something yeah. like that yeah so but what you do honestly like what I do you know I don't I left my gym behind and said I want to do this and I asked my husband, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make maybe a third of what I made. And the fact that he let me do it, knowing our income would be very low. So, but what I can give is this, I can give this back. I can give my stuff that I do for free. I can help movement. I can do things with can do MS. I can do those things that help that give the community back things and I can spread awareness. So Always. I may not be able to donate to every single cause that I would love to do, but I can, I can do what we're all able to do. And Jamie, you do beautiful things with your advocating. Thank you. And I believe that I love that you are constantly like, well, you can, if you can't do this, let's try this. Like you talked about earlier, <laughs> because we do get caught up in, you know, no, I always do this. I always right. have a turkey sandwich. Well, guess right. what? You're gluten free now. So you have to yes. have gluten free bread. So things exactly. like that to, to be able to not only accept it, but, you know, know that there are other things out there. Absolutely. 100%. So here's your next one. Okay. okay. If you were able to say one thing and leave it one thing to a newly diagnosed or just MS and epilepsy, if you had a patient, if you had a lineup of patients and you had your one thing you could say, what would it be? Never stop. Ooh, I like that. Well, you know, I like that. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be a type A person to know that. Um, it's a nice thought to be like every day is a day, but I'm always thinking yeah. about, is there a better time to take my medication? Yeah. You know, what types of things can I do? Can I connect with Kathy and get more people that, right. you know, want to talk to me? Things to that effect. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. I love that because it goes into everything, you know, the whole moving it, the whole moving our body and not quitting on those days where we're just yeah. so, and let's be honest, we all have those days where we feel like I can't, I can't anymore. I'm just too tired. Okay. Yeah. We can get on these and we can look really happy and like every day is happy, but it's not. And if we're right. being really honest, some days are just exhausting. So I, Jamie, I think that's perfect. It. So, you know, yes. being able to acknowledge it and not be sad about it. You yeah. know, like if I'm not doing good, I have what I call seizure eyes where they just don't open up. Yes. And my husband knows he'll like be like, yeah. it's time for you to sit down. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And to not be honest about that, I think is more difficult than anything for other patients and other newly diagnosed or people who've had it for a long time and are just mm -hmm. looking for answers to take it serious because of every post, every time we're on, we look like we're doing great. We feel great. Then it's not real honest. And I think that was what you'll have to come on to that support group. It's Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, it's just, this one is for women just for women. Cause I wanted it to be something we're that the best. you are, I want you on. So, mm -hmm. um, I felt like it needed to be so we could share things, you know, that we wouldn't necessarily share in front of men. 
but it's a, it's a great group. And these women are, are lovely, hysterical, and we talk about everything. So um, it's great, but you're invited at all women. It's, it's MS. So it's, um, it's called women who disrupt MS. So just a little ching ching out there. Any women you can um, email at MS disrupted at um, Gmail and come on in. It's when it's actually tomorrow night. So it's the third yep. Wednesday of every month. So you're total Jamie, we'd love to have you. So it's, um, How it's just a really it? fun. Is it, it depends on the top, usually an hour. People kind of, you know, go off if they feel like it, I've got something going on. Some of them will want to stay a little bit and chat, but we also have a very, it's just private Facebook group. So then later, I love that as it's grown, now it's over a year. So the women chat more together and mm -hmm. have, they've just made some beautiful friendships, which is what you want out of the group. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. But Jamie, awesome. I am so excited that we have this time. I want to do this again because too. we've been trying to, and we've not been able to, which is crazy. So um, I want to do this. I want to have some fun. I want to come visit you in Chicago. That would be fun. I think we yes. could get in trouble. I mean, in we a probably good could. Way. Yes. In the best of ways we could, in the best but I definitely way. want to. Best. You have meant so much to me. You have been such a support to me since- the, since I met you, you've always yeah. been there to support me. And I just could not tell you how much I love and appreciate all you do. Well, and I love your attitude and that you do Thank reach you. out when you were having your seizures and stuff and you asked me questions. And I appreciated yeah. that, that you were brave enough to take the time and say, who do I know that has epilepsy that would do? <laughs> and I, I was like, you. I'm terrified. What in the heck is this? And why did yeah. it happen? And yeah. what do I do now? So I love you. And I thank you yeah. that you are always there. So if you don't know, Jamie, you better get on and I'm going to have your Instagram, your handles at the bottom. Okay. So okay. I, you've got to get with Jamie if you don't know her, she's a beautiful yeah. soul. I love you so much. And so oh, thank you, Kathy. I am I'm, oh, the rest I love of the you. day is not going to come <laughs> tell you. <laughs> you are a beautiful soul. And um, do not miss this. I can't wait to hear the feedback on this one because I know so many people love you. So hope you enjoyed this episode with Jamie and get on and just love her to death. Go on and give her your love and follow her if you're not. She's also on TikTok. So all of that will be yes. on the show notes. So big loves and hearts. Bye, guys. Welcome. We'll hope to see you next time on Move It or Lose It, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Move It or Lose It podcast, where you can, again, find us every Tuesday and also wherever you like your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Stitcher. Join us on that. And we can't wait to see you again. We're going to have a lot of exciting guests and working together. And as always, you'll hear us say at the end of every podcast, we are stronger together. So let's do it. Let's become stronger together. Have a great day.